Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Rock Jaws, and today I'm gonna teach you guys my top five tips on how to enhance your art. Yeah. Yes, this is my temporary setup. We're currently in a big move, but I just wanted to get my weekly video out to you guys. So many of you comment asking what I do to finish the last 10% of my art pieces. Usually when I go into color dodge in my videos, I'm not done with the piece yet. You know, I spend one to 10 more hours, make it ready to post and turn it into a print. Back in school, I had a bunch of deadlines and so I picked up some tips and tricks on how to make my art instantly better before I turn it in. But before we get into it, I will let you guys know that I'm having a smoothie. Yeah. What the? Moving sale! Yes! 21% off on rothdraw.com. All prints and apparel. Go check it out and let's get started. For this video, I'll be using Photoshop, but most art programs will have similar tools for you guys to use and follow along with. And tip number one is curves and color range. Yeah, these are two effects that I use to experiment with color and maybe change up the whole palette and feel of my pieces. Usually when we work on paintings for so long, these colors are baked into our brains. And so I just need something to shake things up. Let's use curves on my original character, Wish. And the default hotkey for curve is Control M. We have this bar here. The top of the bar is the highlights. The middle of the bar are mid-tone, and the bottom of the bar are shadows. And so you can mess around with some of the values. And to be honest, I don't have a goal when I open up curves. I just want to experiment, you know? And don't be afraid if you don't know how the formula works, you don't know how this curve works. I literally just move around this bar until something cool pops up, ooh. And also, you can change the RGB. The red, green, and blue. You can brighten up all the reds, and then you can cool down all the shadows. I love using curve, but be careful not to go too crazy with it because your piece can start to look deep fried and then it becomes a mess. Just try to have a story or intention in mind of what you want your audience to feel. A lot of my pieces have this kind of rainbow, chromatic, psychedelic effect, and I get that through curves. Sometimes you spend like 10 or 15 minutes on curve and then you realize you actually like the original better. And that's okay. I think the point is that you try something new, you try to find another direction and it kind of confirms your point that your original instinct was right. Next tool, same tip, is color range. Yeah, curves kind of affects the whole entire piece, but sometimes maybe you just wanna select a certain part and experiment with that. So we're gonna go select color range and whatever color you pick, on your piece, shows up as white. And if you wanna select more colors, hold down shift. And so now I'm gonna use curves to experiment with the selection of the sky. Nice, before, after. Oh my gosh, I kinda really like that. <laughs> and tip number two is Gaussian blur. I pronounced this wrong the first time, you know, Gauss, Gaussian, Gaussian, I, I don't know. It, it makes me wonder why the name Gaussian blur and so actually, Gaussian blur is the result of blurring an image by a Gaussian function. Named after mathematician and scientist Carl Frederick Gauss. Hello. Math? Ah, oh, I got into art to get away from math. But yes, Gaussian blur, thank you, Mr. Carl. I use Gaussian blur in a lot of my portraits because it adds a depth of field. You know, it mimics the camera. And so we're gonna use it on my piece Chroma here, which I painted in my editorial video. So if you wanna access Gaussian blur, go to filter, Blur, Gaussian blur. Gosh, I feel like I need my glasses. And you don't want to do too much because you'll blow out some of the details that you've painted. So I usually like something around maybe uh, five to 10, let's do seven. And now what I do is I take my eraser and I erase out ooh, the focal point. Look at that. And if you want to take it farther and get that real camera depth of field effect, I'm going to make a color vignette around the whole piece. Ooh, look at that. Before, after. Yeah, so I love using Gaussian blur on a lot of my portraits to help guide the focus of my viewer. Understood. And our third tip is adding noise and texture. Often when we paint digitally, it can look flat or lack impact. And so I want something to add dimension. So this is my new piece Flourish that I painted for Patreon. I love it so much. And you can see here, I've already began to add some paint texture to the piece. And so let's add some more. So I'm gonna go to Google and type in 
paint texture. Ooh, look at that. I really resonate with this one. And so we're gonna pop in our painting and cover our entire painting and set the blending mode to overlay. <gasps> Ooh, look at that. Gorgeous. Yeah, this is obviously a little too intense. So you wanna experiment around a little bit. And now I'm blending the edges of the texture a little bit so it's more cohesive, so it's not a hard line. And erase out some of her face because I want her face to be smooth and everything else is textured. And you can experiment with all sorts of textures, you know, stone, maybe stars and speckles, or even fabric. As I mentioned before, I painted this piece for my Patreon, and so if you want more video tutorials like this and want to see my full painting process, head over to patreon.com slash rothjaws. And tip number four is chromatic aberration. Yeah, you know that kind of red, blue color bleed you see in a lot of sci-fi, cyberpunk art. Even though it's heavily used in those genres, in reality, any camera lens can produce some sort of aberration, so don't feel limited. And for this piece here, I'm gonna use chromatic aberration to give Miracle the feeling of movement. So let's go to window, channels. And you see here, we have RGB. I'm gonna select red, but turn visibility on and then let's select the whole piece or any part that you want the effect to happen on. We're selecting the red channel and we can move it however we want. But make sure you don't get too crazy because it'll make your image look really blurry. That's what chromatic aberration is. It's colors that are out of focus. And like the other tips, I'm going to erase where I don't want this effect. Yeah, you can see here the effect on her arms, the magical elements, and the dress. In school, me and all my classmates abused the crap out of chromatic aberration because we thought it made our paintings look cooler. But now that I'm older, we realize that less is more. And the fifth and final tip, you guys knew it was coming. I've been wanting to do it. It's what I'm known for. It's to flip your canvas. Yes. Just kidding. It's Color Dodge. And if you don't know, Color Dodge is a blending mode that's made its way into almost every single program as far as I know. And essentially what it does is it brightens the base color with the blend color, which is why I never use white. I pick almost a uh, kind of a, like a mid-tone. Yeah, so this is my new piece called Skydive and it features Scout for my book, Nima. Ooh, look at that. Now the board pops and let's move to the sunset and it's gonna have this kind of soft flare vibe and color dodge is perfect for this. <sighs> nice, look at that. Look at that beautiful light effect. Before and after. Just be mindful of the direction of your light source and experiment with your brush size. You can see here for the sunset, I use a big airbrush, but maybe for his clothes here, we're gonna add some color dodge to the rim light. Nice. Also, I know it might sound weird coming from me, but don't overdo color dodge because it can instantly blow out your painting. Those are my top five tips on how to enhance your art. Hopefully they can help you and answer some questions on how I finish my pieces. Wait, if this was color dodge time, then does that mean the video's over?